morning everyone, hello and welcome back to Sew What If I Sew. I'm Jess and if you are new this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. And this week you join me for a very exciting vlog. So at the time of filming it is a week until my birthday. Now normally my birthday lasts about a month. I really like my birthday, we do loads of stuff. Um, well like we don't do loads of ridiculous stuff but I have a lot of friends from different parts of the world and everything so I don't tend to sometimes I do like one big thing and then I have lots of little lunches and dinners and stuff with specific people around to kind of fit people's schedules um so normally we do a lot and obviously this year can't do that because of lockdown so I thought instead I would lean into my birthday from a sewing angle and sew myself a super cute me made birthday outfit so what I will be doing is creating the Florence blouse and an A-line mini skirt, which is a hack from a pattern in a Great British Sewing Bee book, and I will elucidate a little bit more on that later. But just to show you the fabrics I will be using. Uh, full disclosure, my Florence blouse was started in another vlog, but I will replay the first step, which is basically all I did, in this video so that it's clear. But this is the stunning fabric I'm using. It is a polka dot Lady McElroy Chantilly from Felicity Fabrics. And for the skirt, I've still got it in my lovely Felicity Fabrics box because I don't want to damage it. I will be using this black jumbo cord, which I love, it's beautiful. I may have to line it, but we will see. Um, I'll definitely have to interface some of it as well, but it's so soft and snuggly. It's got a little bit more drape that is like, not like super structured. So I think it'll make a really, really cute mini skirt. So these two together and we will be sewing. Uh, over the next couple of days to make a super cute me made birthday outfit so I'm really looking forward to you guys joining me for that We have sewed the side seams together, which is nice and simple. Uh, hilariously, the other day I was so tired and just not thinking straight, and I accidentally sewed the um, arms together because I was like, it's a raglan sleeve, oh, why doesn't it fit? And then was like, I'm an idiot. That's hilarious, I need to sew the side seams down because there's a sleeve to go in there. So, anyway, so we've done that. The next job is to assemble the dart in the sleeve piece. So it's got a dart at the top of the shoulder. We need to close that, stitch it, to give volume in the sleeve but also bring it in to fit on that raglan line. So let's do that. So um, I just went on to the next step because it was easier and like it didn't really need explaining. So what we did is we sewed our sleeve darts, which are here. Um, I'm a bit concerned because my darts seem to be smaller than the picture in the pattern, but I'm wondering if that's just because of the like the size I did, um, but we will, we will see. And then I've sewed my sleeves together here. So the next step is shearing. Now I've never done shearing before. Um, so kind of the first step for me really is to do a little bit of research. I have watched a wonderful tutorial from the Stitch Sisters and I've also watched the YouTube tutorial that goes alongside the Florence blouse and I feel slightly more prepared. So the kind of crux of the matter seems to be that we only use our shearing elastic on the bobbin, we hand wind it onto the bobbin and you do not stretch it when you put it on the bobbin, you must hand wind it on. Um, that you use a longer, so uh, the kind of standard stitch length on the machine is two and a half. You probably want to do it at about three and a half, four, and that you do not stretch or pull as you're putting it through the machine. So that is the kind of the crux of it. So I'm going to hand wind onto my bobbin now, fit it into my machine, and we will see how we do. <laughs> Fingers crossed all goes as it should. But first, before I do the shearing, I suddenly just thought I was gonna do it afterwards, um, I need to hem the sleeves first because otherwise they'll be all wiggly once I've done the shearing so I won't be able to get to them properly. So I'm gonna hem them quickly and then we will set up the machine for shearing and we will have a go. <laughs>
I've got my um, sheer elastic loaded in here. I've just left my other bobbin up here for the moment. Um, and it's fed through, if you can see that. So I've got that through the bobbin underneath and it's not stretched coming through, it's very relaxed. Um, although it does ping about, so do be careful with it. Same needle as before, same foot as before, and then we're going over to here and I'm gonna go up to three and a half. Um, four, no, I'll leave it at three and a half because sometimes my thread tension goes a bit weird. Um, and I'm actually gonna drop, I had this higher because I was dealing with a very tricky fabric the other day, but I think I'm gonna put it back to normal if I'm working with elastic just to make life a little bit easier. And then what we do, I've got the arm off because I'm doing a sleeve. I've got my sleeves lovely hemmed here and we're going to feed it onto the machine. It's quite a long cuff. We're doing 13 rows of shearing on each side. So I anticipate having to refill my bobbin again. But when we stitch through, we're not stretching. We're just letting the fabric feed through. Here we are. We have a sleeve. I'm going to feed it, pull my tails back. Oh, that elastic really does bounce around. Goodness me. And let's feed the sleeve onto the machine. Now I'm going to start here, which is two centimeters, I believe, from the sleeve cuff, because I want that little ruffle at the bottom. I think it'll look pretty. So, first ever row of shearing. Turn my machine a bit so you can see. And I'm gonna go nice and slowly and see how we do. So we're not, we're not pulling the fabric, we're just gently guiding it through, make sure it goes in a straight line. see the fabric gathering up behind which is a good sign and we'll keep going and remember you've got to do it on the right side out of the fabric so you don't want the shearing to be visible Here we are, my first ever, my arm on twizzling, go at shearing. So there we go, I've done nine lines because I literally cannot do any more on my machine, like it won't go around and I'm quite happy with that. I've used a whole bobbin to do those nine lines. It's got a nice little trim and if I try on the sleeve, like just at the wrist, so it goes that way around. I quite like the effect of that. I think that's quite pretty. I like the puff. I think any more rows would be a little bit too much for me, but we'll see. I might do one more row, not this way, but like around the top, because it's a little, it's, it's quite a big puff, but we'll see when it's all on how that kind of complements the rest of it. So there we go, one sleeve done. Let's get the other one done. And then I think I'm gonna stop for today because I'm trying to take it a little bit slower. This is a, after all a garment for my birthday. So I want it to be special and I want to take my time over it. So let's shear the other arm. We've got to rewind our bobbin elastic, which again, we just do. So if I take my bobbin out, I didn't really show you this last time because I did it on time-lapse. So what you do is leave the elastic bobbin just like on the table or in your lap works. And what you need to do is, honestly, I realized today I've been threading bobbins wrong for ages. Um, you're meant to put the thread through one of the top holes here and then you wind. And honestly, I've never done that. I just wind it around a couple of times and then do it on the machine. But you know, if you're like me and didn't realize you aren't meant to thread bobbins like that, it's hilarious. So you thread it through the top, pop your thumb down on it just to hold it still. And then we don't stretch. We just very gently pop it on, filling up the whole bobbin so it's so, it's so like just loose and you know, like it's fine. You will need to turn it a couple of times because it's quite hard with your hand in the way. But once you have enough turns, you can let go of the bit at the top. So there's that, there we go. Now we can just wind it on again. And you can, the thing is it doesn't have to, so the Stitch Sisters tutorial for this was great because they said it doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to look even like a bobbin you would fill on your machine does. You just gently wind it on nice and loose no stretching as it goes on and fill up your bobbin if it looks neat yay but it doesn't have to as long as it's even and as full as you would normally make your bobbin not like any more full or anything especially if you have a front loading bobbin like me because it still has to comfortably sit in the bobbin case so there we go that's what mine looks like so it's sort of it's kind of hard to see but it's it's like not the neatest thing in the world but it is a full bobbin so then we leave a nice big tail on it 
we go. And then we take our bobbin casing. This is really helpful on their tutorial, so I'm just going to show you guys as well. Um, you also need to cut off this little sticking out bit here because we don't want it to get tangled up in the bobbin mechanism and do anything bad to our machine. Um, I'll link their tutorial below because I did find it really, really helpful. We then pop it in the bobbin casing. You put your thumb on the top. This is what I learned from them. It's good to know for us front-loading bobbin people. Place your thumb on the top and keep the bobbin still. You then pull the elastic gently so that it reaches it's like taut and thin enough to go through the bobbin casing. You slide it through the grooves and then let it come through and relax. And there we go. And now that is my lovely bobbin casing done. I'm going to slip it in there. And then you do the take up the way you would normally. So there it goes. I'm just going to pull. Up it comes. And that's actually a little bit too long, that tail. So I will just snip it there. And off we go again, making sure our fabric is right side up so that the elastic's on the inside of the sleeve. Um, you could do, with the fabric I'm using, you could do contrast shearing because there's a black spot, but I've chosen to do mine with white thread so that it's a little bit more discreet. And that's the same throughout. I'm not, I'm considering that contrast black stitching on the front because I thought it would look really pretty, but we will see. I quite like just letting the polka dot speak for itself, but if we do any accent stitching, it will be in black. So. Let's do the other arm. this project which I really needed um, I actually made this Nora it's enormous like ridiculously huge um, I think I'm gonna have to elasticate the sleeves because this happens whenever I raise my arm which is considering how cold it is right now not very snug so I might elasticate the sleeves a little bit so that I can like sh shove them up and they stay there and um, so anyway last time I saw you we had just sheared our lovely sleeves so I've got some sheared cuffs got two sleeves which look very odd dismembered and then I have the body of a raglan top so the front is not connected the back is so if the next thing we're going to do is insert the sleeves into these big sleeve holes and then i believe we're going to sew up the front but we're definitely going to insert the sleeves first i'm going to get the instructions up on my laptop just to remind myself what the sort of next step is um, and then i think the more i think about it the more i think i am going to go for that decorative top stitching because it is a center front seam I think it would look really pretty, but we'll, we'll see. I also need to cut out some bias binding. So that's another job for today, but let's pop the sleeves in, we'll sew up the front and we'll see how it looks. And then we will make all other decisions from that point onwards, but let's, let's get going. Here we are. I don't know why my hair is looking really like messy today. Um, so here we are. Um, I have attached, I've inserted the sleeves, which because I cut the markings, well, I didn't cut the markings properly, <laughs> took a little longer than I would have liked it to, but that's not the pattern, that's me being an idiot. Um, however, sleeves are in and I have sewn up the front. And what's more is I decided to go for my decorative top stitching. So I've obviously, this will all get enclosed in the neckline. I quite like it, I think it's quite fun. It's also secured the front seam and we're now in. We've got our fun sleeves. So we have not got much left to do. I need to bias bind the neckline and I need to hem it. And to be honest, I think I'm gonna hem it first. So I will quickly 
um, do a light fabric hem which is what the lovely Donna from Size Me Sewing suggests um, so again running a stitch like a long stitch or a base stitch along uh, one and a half centimeters in fold fold and then stitch along that you can remove the base stitch later if you need to um, I'm considering again doing a contrast hem because I quite like the way the black stitching looks but I am gonna have to be very neat so I might spend a little bit of time really pinning that in place and getting it just right um, before I do it but I think I am like I think that would be nice so I'm gonna do it that way um, and then I will cut out the bias binding from the fabric I have left over and hope I should have enough it's not a very long neckline so I think I think I should have enough but I'm gonna go through and just cut off the dog ears um, and generally neaten it all up but we're nearly there which is really exciting so hemming it first going exceptionally slowly and praying that I don't mess anything up and then we will cut out some bias binding everyone so we are excuse the mess we are finishing off the blouse this morning now after my small bias binding crisis this morning which I didn't film because there was no point um <clears throat> basically the blouse is done so I'll hold it up it's got some bias binding pinned to it at the moment but here it is with its lovely contrast stitching down the front it's fun sleeves it's hem I'm very proud of but desperately need to press um so I need to bind the neckline now I don't have enough of this fabric left unfortunately in the right as in I don't have enough fabric left on the bias <laughs> to do it and if I kind of Frankenstein it together it will look awful and I'm not doing that so I asked on my story I had lots of different options I could have used some of my dinosaur binding but it would have shown through a bit much like I could have done it invisible but it would have shown the color would have shown through and um, so a lot of people have said just to use the black I have which I I don't know how I feel but also I don't know if that's because it looks very big right now, but if I fold it over for you guys and do it like that It's not too bad. I think it's it's quite nice But I just I wish it was a bit thinner and I'm wondering if there's a way I can stitch it on That would leave a little bit more down the back and a little less at the front So we're gonna have a go at that this morning. I'm gonna use a nice long stitch and then I'll go over it um, but I think yeah, so if I could get it to about that that I think is a bit better But um, yeah, I, d I don't know because I don't want to ruin it But I do think it looks quite nice So I'm gonna have a go and we'll see we'll see what happens and then my blouse will be done So that's really exciting, but I don't want to rush it just because I want it to be done because I love it I really I, I really want to make sure I get this right because I love this blouse already like I can already see it becoming such a firm favorite So we will we will see but for now Let's have a crack at stitching this on and see what it looks like Actually, I do quite like it and I'm quite proud of it. So here we go. This is my Florence blouse complete with black binding. It looks a bit strange hung up but I also think this blouse takes a lot of shape when you wear it. But I'm very very proud of how neat the stitching is. I'm not gonna lie. That's I'm gonna show you guys how proud I am of this. It's on really neatly. I think it works with the other black detailing I've done and considering I'll be wearing it with a black cord skirt as well. So I'm very chuffed with this though and um, in terms of pattern um, it says in the notions that you require bias binding for it, but I didn't read that because I'm an idiot. So if you are doing the Florence blouse, you will need to get some bias binding as a notion or have enough fabric to make your own, is the other side. Um, but otherwise, I found this pattern really simple, really easy, 
um, like honestly such a basic construction but so effective and I'm in love I'm in love with these sleeves they are just so so fun I love them and I can't wait to see what this looks like on so uh, first impressions it's quite a boxy blouse um, but despite making a bigger size it still doesn't have enough boob room for me so I think I don't know because of where the sleeves hit personally for me I think next time I'm gonna make the sleeves smaller Oh, or a bigger dart at the top, I should say. And I'm going to make the bust piece a little bit bigger at the top because it still pulls a bit when I um, take my arms back. That being said, it's very, very comfy. It's quite long. However, I will be wearing it basically like this, tucked into jeans because I think it, it's like better for my silhouette personally. I'm in love with my cuffs. I feel like a very fancy pirate. Uh, <laughs> they're really fun. The saga of the neckline continued a little bit. I'm going to come down here so you can see. So... I did the lovely contrast bias binding. However, I then had an issue when, when I tried it on where I had all this excess fabric up here and the neckline really stood out. I don't know if I stretched it, it was like that basically. And it looked really, really strange. It looked like the top of, um, <laughs> made me think of the top of like astronaut suits where they have the kind of rough and stuff to sit in. And I think part, part of that for me was I need a much bigger dart on the shoulder because I've got quite a neat frame. Like I've got a bigger bust but a tiny back. So I do think it was a little bit big. So what I then ended up doing is tucking it under, doing some very, very neat stitching, which I'm very proud of. And um, actually by tucking it under, I reduced the amount of fabric at the shoulders. It still gapes a tiny bit, but I think it just needs a bit of a, an aggressive press and an aggressive iron, if I'm honest. Um, I made the third size in the pattern, I think, which for my frame, I would say, is a good fit in terms of like it's because it's meant to be quite baggy it's a good fit it's a good fit on the arms the arm length is good um just for me i probably would make i do a little bit of a full bust adjustment on the front pieces just to have a little bit more arm room because i am very aware of how much movement there is in terms of like like how much the neckline pulls to the side if i take my arm back but that being said it's a really nice blouse pattern i really like it um, I'm a big fan of the sleeves, they are really fun. And what I love, these are my first go at shearing, and what I absolutely love about it is they just stay there. It is the dream. So if I want to pull them up, they still don't move. Oh my God, I think I'm gonna shear the cuffs on everything I own. This is just, because I am an interminable um, sleeve like slider up. And this is how I live most of my life at work because I need free arms often, especially when I'm setting up events. I need to make sure that there's nothing in the way of my wrists. But equally basic stuff like washing up and things, it's nice to be able to pull your sleeves up and they just stay there. It is literally the dream. So yeah, I'm, I'm loving this blouse, it's really nice. It's a really comfy fit. Um, obviously the neckline didn't go exactly to plan, but that's okay um, because I fixed it and I'm happy with the way it is and you can't really see the black through it as well, which I think is quite nice. Um, and even if you turn it under, it kind of looks intentional because there's a really neat line of double stitching there now, which is quite exciting. So, um, advice for making this, you really do need to cut the pattern out carefully. I could have been a little bit more careful. Um, this fabric is Lady McElroy Chantilly uh, from Felicity Fabrics, and it is really comfy. And it's got like a kind of crepe, let's see if it's visible, like, I don't know if you can see the texture. It's got like a kind of crepe texture to it, but it's so light and flowy, and it works fantastically with this sort of sleeve. Like, it's got a really nice amount of drape. Um, and it's actually not that see-through, so I'm wearing a skin coloured bra, and I have found, obviously, I can't wear, like, black bras or anything under it, but anything neutral doesn't really show through, which I was quite impressed by. Um, but yeah, I think if you're making this pattern, it is beginner-friendly, um, and it's it's very easy, it's just you have to be quite exact, particularly with the shoulder darts. Um, and I think, yeah, for me next time, I'll be taking quite a bit more out of the shoulder dart, because it sits on the back of my shoulder, whereas I think it should actually sit in the center of my shoulder. So I think I needed to take about that much more out of it. And that also would have taken it out the neckline and stopped me having that load of extra fabric. And that's not the fault of the pattern. I do think that is just my frame and my body. But yeah, I am super happy with this. So let's go put this on the ironing board and get on with the skirt. Hello everyone. So we're on to the skirt, which is very exciting. Um, and I'm hoping, well, even though the blouse wasn't complicated, I think the skirt will still be quite a lot quicker because there's only two pieces. So, it's from the Sew Me Book Fashion With Fabric. 
and it's a hack of a lace stretch pencil skirt that's in here um, and the hack is called a tweed A-line mini skirt which is obviously exactly what I need so if I show it to you here we go so there are just two pieces we're amending the shape so instead of going down like the pencil skirt we're going out to that A-line and stopping um, and it's exactly what I want really here. Now my fabric is fractionally lighter weight than that. However, you can do the pattern with linen or lightweight denim as well, so we should be fine. Here is my wonderful skirt fabric. So it's black and it's dark, which is unhelpful. But here we go, if I hold it right up, you will see, it's a tiny, tiny bit see-through, my liner. it. Um, it is this big jumbo cord from Felicity Fabrics. It's really lightweight and it's wonderful. Um, I'm definitely going to interface it because my Brie skirt, which I made in like similar weight fabric, I was like, oh, I don't need to interface it. And you do, because after about four washes, you desperately, desperately need to interface it because it just loses structural integrity. So I will be very careful doing this. So I am going to be using a different zip technique to what uh, the book wants. So it wants me to use an invisible zip. However, I would like to use a visible zip. I got a metal zip for this reason and a little pull. Here is my metal zip and my zip pull. So I'm gonna use these exposed in the back because I actually really like that look, um, which means I am gonna look up, well, gonna need to look up how to do an exposed zip because I've never done one before, but it can't be that difficult, surely. Um, considering how difficult invisible zips are, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> so. I am quite excited about this project, it's going to be fun, I love this fabric, I love the kind of weight of it and I was actually wearing, so I have a, a finer cord uh, ready to wear skirt that I bought from New Look a few years ago um, that's burgundy like this and I love it and I wear it all the time so if I can make another black one that just fits me a bit better that's sort of the dream because I don't know if you guys have this issue but because I have a significant difference between my waist and hips obviously a-line stuff is not really made for me um i find that i can get skirts that either fit my hips or fit my waist but there is no in between at all it's ridiculous <laughs> it's really really annoying so hopefully with this skirt i'm actually going to grade between sizes so that as far as possible it's snug on my waist it doesn't have to be tight just snug so i can tuck stuff into it and comfortable on my hips so it doesn't ride up the second I sit down. Uh, so I'm very, very excited. It's only a couple of days to my birthday now, so I do need to sort of get on with it. So this morning, uh, before work, that's why I'm in my pyjamas, I am just going to trace the pattern out and do my grading bits, uh, because honestly it, it's two pieces, so it can't be, it won't be a long sew. But let's, let's get the pattern traced, because that is the annoying step, and then we can go from there. I've traced out my pattern pieces and I've read the instructions. So what I've, I've made a couple of decisions. Um, first of all, I have graded between an eight and a 10 because as I explained, the fit on this garment is really important to me. And it's important that it fits my waist whilst giving me enough room to actually move my hips. So I've graded between an eight and a 10, which in the Great British Sewing Bee book is about right. So it's about 27 inch waist for the size eight, which is fine because I'm 26 to 27. so perfect and then the size 10 hips are 38 and they're only like 34 or something for the size 8 so um and I'm in that 30 again 36 37 in my hips so that should be absolutely fine there's no pockets on this garment which I'm okay with to be honest um, and I'm doing a few things differently so I'm not lining the skirt um and I'm not doing an invisible zip I'm actually using my exposed metal zip so I have decided that I'm pretty much now not going to look at the instructions uh, hear me out. So the thing is, if you look at it, it's a skirt, it's a back piece skirt with two darts in it. Sorry, one dart, so a dart each side. Um, and then a front piece with nothing to do to it. 
and then just an exposed zip to insert in the back and then there's some facings it wants me to do a dropped lining with facings but it doesn't really talk about them in the instructions so again just leaving the instructions where they are I'll cut out my facings I know they're going to need to be interfaced so even if it doesn't say in the instructions because the instructions are for tweed my fabric is lighter so I'm going to interface my facings and then attach the facings um, and yeah just basically make it like I would make a normal skirt I'm just going to ignore most of the instructions because yeah my zip is different um, everything actually yeah the whole way I'm tackling it is different I don't want to confuse myself so I'm quite excited though so here are my pattern pieces so as you can see very very simple half a skirt with no dart this gets cut and fold and then half a skirt with dart you can see I've added fullness to the hip and then basically I've added it it's a little bit clunky someone asked me recently how I do um, grading and what resources I use the short answer is I don't I just do it um <laughs> you grade between sizes and I know for example my waist measurement my hip measurement so I know I need to be a size 8 waist and a size 10 hip so I just grade the line in between those things so that I end up at a size 10 by the time it needs my hips and I start at a size 8 it's very simple um but at some point I will do a video on it if it's useful so let me know in the comments below now I'm going to cut some fabric out and find my interfacing and then I think I'll have to get on to work but there's not long to go now so I'm hoping to get this done today the Florence blouse really is the key part of this outfit and this skirt while the fabric is stunning and I really like the pattern I'm hoping will be a much quicker make finished work until my birthday which is really exciting so on with skirt construction so I cut it all out this morning before work now I need to just really get on with it really so um it's going to be it's very very simple but I will talk through any interesting bits um but basically darts in the back pieces front and back together facings together um I'm going to interface my facings as well so interface them first facings together and then facings onto skirt flip zip in we're done, we're good. So, which, when I say it like that, sounds very simple. Um, and I can't think of anything that's go ho gonna go horribly wrong. That being said, they kind of sound like famous last words, so we will see. Also, a hilarious thing, so the cord I'm using is from Felicity Fabrics, so is the fabric for my blouse, actually, they're both beautiful. Um, it's really funny, I cut it on the carpet earlier, and there's tiny, like, dust, and I've never cut corduroy before, so I didn't realise. So there is, like, black dust all over the floor, so once I have made this skirt, I'm gonna have to hoover, because it's really, really bad, and I don't want to track it through the house. It's, like, right in the middle of the living room floor ideal so yeah let's let's get on and do some sewing Here we are, um, yeah, as I said, there really wasn't much complex to show you. So we have a skirt, pretty much. 
So, um, I did my facings, I interfaced them. I have got a tiny lint roller out to get rid of all the fluff from the corduroy because it's just everywhere. Oh, it was all over the ironing board, it was a nightmare. So, I have popped them on. You can't really see because it's black, but I've understitched them. Um, understitched the facing. I used white thread on the bobbin so I could actually see what I was doing on the wrong side of the fabric, and that really helped. So, that's in. And all we have left to do now is the hem, and then we have the zip. So, here is my opening at the back. Now, I've done it on one side, but not on the other, where I've just done a few rows of stitches um, at the, like, about a centimetre in. I'm going to do it on here as well, because it makes sure that the top of your zip lies flat and your facing doesn't go for a walk with your zip. So, here is the gap. And my zip goes in here. So if you've never done an exposed zip before, firstly, I'd be quite surprised um, because I was sat thinking last night, oh, there must be a technique to it, but there's not. It's just like, I mean, it's a zip. So the only thing we've got to make sure we do is prepare the opening. So because it needs to sit flat like that, I'm gonna do a tiny kind of almost like a bar tack row of stitches here to keep it flat and open because this skirt is designed for an invisible zip. And then we're going to fold it in like that with the zip and make sure that just the metal teeth are showing. Now, um, we are probably going to have to trim this down afterwards, but let's pop the zip in and see what it looks like. There really isn't much to it, um, but let me know below if you've got any questions, because I'm actually considering doing a little compilation video of like different types of zips to put in. Um, so let me know if anyone would be interested in that. Now, Let's change the foot of the machine and have a crack at this zip. I have a zip, which is very exciting. So I need to give it a bit of a press because a little bit of the top is rolling. Um, and the facings aren't faces are fine but there it is it's in so I've done a little um bar tack across the bottom and then I just sewed it with the regular zipper foot um and I put the teeth at the edge of my singer zipper foot which looks like this so I had the teeth in line with this because I wanted the metal teeth to be visible and there we go I'm pretty proud of that actually it's not bad the facings are included in the zip which is pretty good so in terms of inserting a, an open zip, I think the key is just to not think about it. In terms of like, with an invisible zip, there's a huge amount of kind of thought and brain power that has to go into it. But with an open, like visible zip like this, an exposed zip, you just put it in, like you'd put in a zip to a bag or anything else, like you just bang it in. Um, the only thing to be aware of is to make sure that your seams are pressed back and that you do that little tack at the bottom just to make sure the zip finishes properly. But yeah, I'm pretty chuffed with that. So. All I need to do now is hem it. I'm going to try it on super quickly to see the length. I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like on because I've already noticed a little bit of an alteration I need to do. So here it is on. Really unhelpfully, I'm also wearing leggings. But the skirt runs to here. And it's a really, really nice fit on the waist, first to say. There's enough room for me to move properly, which is great. The only thing is, there's a little bubble of fabric at each side. So I'm quickly just going to pin that. Take It probably needs like at most half a centimetre, if that, just quickly pinned off. And if I pin that and I'm still able to sit down, then my skirt will be completely done. And I just need to do a little fold up hem because it's already quite short. So I'm just gonna do a literal like half a centimetre up, tuck it under and just fold, um, hem that because I think that's gonna be the best way to do it. So very exciting. Do a quick adjustment. I'll show you guys again once I've done the adjustment. skirt has been refitted much much happier with that now much smoother line and yeah it fits it's really really comfy and I can sit down with a degree of relative ease which is good and it doesn't slide up my legs so that is a major win so here we are a quick shot of the outfit before I go get some pictures um I'm really chuffed actually the skirt is so comfortable and is already going to become such a firm favorite um, the cord's really cosy and actually I don't feel constricted but it definitely fits my waist and hips and it doesn't move when I sit down which is 
the literal dream and I love the combination of this top and this skirt because it's kind of you know it with the fitted element then having kind of a big kind of floaty blouse on top I really really like so yeah it's really fun uh skirt pattern's great super easy I mean I can't say too much about the actual pattern instructions because I literally didn't follow them at all I put the book away once I've cut out the pieces um, but uh, if you would like me at some point to do a tutorial literally on just putting together an A-line skirt or a blog post or something, let me know in the comments below, happy to do it, um, because I find it quite easy, but I'm aware that like it might, it might be a useful resource, <laughs> so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Um, this whole project's been really, really fun, and I'm super excited to feel ultra special on my birthday, so I'm going to get some photos now. So all that remains for me to say is thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, and I'm off to go enjoy my last day as a 23 year old before I turn 24. Woo. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share and subscribe if you wanna hear more from me. Um, I have tried my best to link all the fabrics, patterns, everything in the description below. Um, but let me know in the comments if you have any questions at all and I will as always do my best to answer them. But thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.